Enjoy the show? Thank you. Please come again. Come back soon. We're expecting an amazing new batch of robots for your entertainment. The next shell will be even more interesting. Please come back here for a sequel. I see you enjoyed the show so much. Leave to purchase a ticket. Please go to the ticket booth at the other end of the foyer. Don't forget the snack bar. Please proceed to the bar. Did you leave anything in the coat check room? Please proceed into the restroom. Leave this place! Major P3, I'm waiting for you in the Pavlov complex. Everything is ready for your arrival. I'll be there as fast as I can. I suggest using a car to move between the research complexes. There was a surge of sprout activity on the surface. The place is positively overrun with mutants. Right. Mutants. Got it. Is that all? Just one more question. No. Filatova wasn't there. I understand. You didn't find any gold rings on Petrov's body, did you? Two rings with Beta 1 and Beta 2 engraved on the inside? No, he didn't have anything on him. P3 out. How goes it, Sonny? Still in one piece? Did I hear right? You finally got that bastard Petrov. Nothing gets by you, huh? Yeah, I got him. Actually, he kind of got himself before I could get him. Don't you worry. If you got his head, that means this will all be over soon. Then you can get some sleep. Now you're speaking my language, Granny Zena. Mind if I stop by for a cup of tea? Stop by any time, Sonny. By the way, uh, you didn't happen to find any engraved gold rings while you were off chasing after Petrov? No. I didn't, Granny Zena. The trough didn't have anything on him. Oh, that's okay. You just watch yourself, Sonny. Stop by if you need anything. <laughs> oh, that's okay. You just watch yourself, Sonny. Stop by if you need anything. Why have you deceived everyone, Comrade Major? Petrov gave you those rings before he died. Everyone else is deceiving me, even Dr. Sechenov, and I never saw it coming. Would you kindly be more specific?
Would you kindly be more specific? Petrov said combat mode was programmed into the bots during construction. He couldn't possibly have reprogrammed them all himself. It's true, goddammit. That Natasha was armed with fucking missiles. Where'd it get him, huh? It's a construction robot. Petrov couldn't have armed it with missile launchers. He's not an engineer. He couldn't have hacked into the robot plant and started changing shit around. He fooled the central hub and made it think innocent people were an invading army. That's it. So why would a construction bot have built-in missile launchers, huh? Unfortunately, after analyzing your logic, I am forced to draw the same conclusion. Especially since your suspicions are more justified than you know. What do you mean? Exactly that. Listen to this recording. What duty are you referring to, Comrade Sentinel? Do you even realize that if the Americans find out that your robots can be switched to combat mode, I guarantee your project will be dead in the water? To my profound chagrin, I failed to pay sufficient attention to the phrase, robots can be switched to combat mode. I took it as a colorful expression Molotov used to cast dispersions upon Dr. Sechenov. The Atomic Heart Project. Petrov wasn't lying. Sechenov and the Politburo want to conquer the U.S. and the entire world. Charles, why does everyone want those rings so bad? You mean the beta connectors? Because they work, but are also considered not to exist. So nobody can prove they're out there, not even collective after the launch. Especially not collective after the launch. For collective, Anyone connected via the beta connectors will simply not exist. But they'll be able to see Collective. Yes, all of it. A person with a beta connector will not be able to influence Collective from the inside, since they won't exist for Collective. But they will know about everything that happens inside it, just like any officially connected human or robot. But can't an officially connected human or robot disconnect from Collective if they want to? They can just take their thought device off, right? I have no data, Comrade Major. But no one can stop a person from removing his or her thought device. It's worn on the head, not implanted in the skull. Charles, no one can force somebody into collective, right? Petrov was wrong about that. Not entirely. What do you mean, not entirely? If I'm not a member of collective, how can collective find out about me? It's quite simple. Let's say you walk past a robot. The robot identifies you as a human, but you are not wearing a thought device. The robot fails to receive mental commands from you in response to its queries. But I can just put my thought on, walk past the bot and do everything I'm supposed to do, then take the thought off, right? Essentially, yes. There's got to be more to it than that.
comrade major. Based on your professional and personal experience, would our civilian robots in combat mode really be able to complete the Atomic Heart project? If Comrade Sechenov and the Politburo want to take over the U.S. and even the whole world, they won't fight regular people. But civilians do perish during combat operations. You know all about that. If the robots are programmed not to kill civilians, they won't attack civilians. You're a robot, Charles. You should know all about that. I'm a robot? In a sense, I suppose you're right. A robotic glove? What? Neuropolymer gloves won't take orders from Collective? It depends on the glove. Some will, and some will only be able to obey their carriers. I digress. Civilian robots will receive the order to activate combat mode from Collective. And whoever sets Collective's policies will easily be able to order them to kill anyone at all, including civilians. Why would they kill... Apolysis starts approximately 7 to 10 minutes after death, followed by defecation in 3 to 5 minutes. Rigor mortis sets in 5 to 6 hours. Then, let me see, complete decomposition in about 5 minutes. What are you doing? I'm counting. Counting. Everything has to be thoroughly calculated. Precision matters. Observation in detail is the key to success. I am a scientist. I must spend every moment examining and cataloging nature's phenomena. Comrade, do you know many people capable of documenting the decomposition of their own body? What's the point? You can't even record your observations. What? Oh, shit. You have a point. So you will help me. Please stay next to me over the entire period of decomposition and keep track of the progress. You will manage. It won't take long. It won't take 535 to 650 days in current condition. Fine. I'll go get my notepad. Oh, cut off or cough. You made me lose my concentration. Let's start again. Autolysis starts approximately... Charles, what is this place? I mean, what is this complex even for? The Pavlov complex is the origin of all of Facility 3826's biological innovations. Unique experiments are conducted here, involving everything from breeding new species of farm animals to developing new space exploration technology. Outer space? You mean they make moon rovers here, not Chalamet? Space exploration is about more than just vehicles. A spaceship and rovers will, of course, be required. But what then? What about after humans reach the Red Planet? So the latest medical breakthroughs, new life support systems, all came from here. Indeed, Comrade Major. So many geniuses worked here for the good of all mankind. And now they're gone.
access granted.
And now you're gone, Professor. What have you done? I was supposed to learn from you, but all I ever got from you was scorn. My self-worth all depended on you, and now... Oh, well. I've still got bullets. I can still fight my way through science. And I stole the box from your office with your favorite music inside. Just so I don't forget, I hid the music box in a safe. The one with the positive password, not the negative one. What will I ever accomplish if I can't even keep a couple of safes straight? The dog! The dog has the positive one.
If you want me to help you... No, no. I want you to help all mankind. That's what I'm trying to do. No, no, no. Let's not waste time, okay? There's barely anything left of me. Look, I did the analysis. I did all the calculations. This neural network echo that allows the dead to talk. It's the key to immortality. But how? This is just residual emotions. Not quite. I just developed a neural network method for polymer self-adaptation in my head. We can prevent the consciousness from fading and use its impulses to direct machine parts. Effectively, this will allow the transfer of a human mind into the machine, rendering it immortal. So, what do I need? Here goes. Turns out it's really simple. Have you got a pen? I didn't expect it to be so easy. When thoughts are the only things you have, oh my, they become so clear and flow so very smooth. D don't leave me hanging, Charles. Record what she says. Yes. Yes. I'm fading. Begin by taking a simple Soviet available in every home. Hey, lady. You there? I'm afraid that's it, Major. The neuropolymer charge is exhausted. Although she was on the verge of a breakthrough. Damn, talk about brain drain. Hey, young man, wait, please. If you want to. No, no, no. That. No, 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 no